Welcome to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer. We'd love to give you our magazine full of inspiring stories. Go to the JenniferSheehanShow.com. I'd like to introduce you to my friend and brother in Christ, Keenan Williams. Hi, Keenan. Hey, Jennifer. How are you? Good. Good Thank to have you on the show. Thank you for having me on the show. You have a crazy story, my friend. It's very crazy. Yes. So <laughs> yes. you start off in the hood. I'm from the hood, too. <laughs> it gives for a great testimonial. <laughs> love it. Love it. So you come from the hood. And one of the shocking parts of the story when you first started talking. By the way, hood is, you know, where most of the black people are. <laughs> oh, no. I'm well, just saying. I'm well, a ebonical <laughs> translation of the hood. Right. <laughs> black people, drugs, alcohol, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was in there, too, yeah. with the gangbangers and drugs and yes. crack houses yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah, all that fun stuff. But um, one of the shocking things that you said to me was that when you were how old when your father said nine gave you a old. gun and said kill your neighbors nine years old i had gotten into a fight with the kids next door right which was very normal in the hood right. we fought it was right. entertainment uh and there were two of them and my dad was very angry when i got came upstairs he handed me a 44 magnum and said i want you to sit on the stairs and when they come up the stairs you shoot them wow Wow. And I waited on the stairs all day for those kids. By God's grace, they never came home. Right. Yeah. Wow. So your father was abusive? He was abusive. His heart was right, but his head was wrong. Okay. He was abusive uh, verbally at times, physically, a lot with my mother. Uh, very hardcore. Never any I love yous. Uh, my mother told me during the whole time of their marriage, of 30-something years, he never said I loved her one time. Wow. So that was the way he was. Uh, he was again. He wasn't a bad person. He was a great provider. Right. He was a great, great provider, but he was a horrible father okay. in his early years. But then he became a great father and my best friend in his latter years. So, oh, yeah. okay. Jesus got a hold of him. Uh huh. I love it when that happens. Yeah, yeah. I, it was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. So, you were a football star. Mm -hmm. Football was my way of uh, exerting my anger, my frustrations. Okay. Uh, you know, you go to school and then you come home to havoc. You come home to anger. You come home to dysfunction. And so football was my way of, instead of hurting people the wrong way, I could hurt people the right way on the football field. And I loved football. Right. You know, in the hood. And that was you, your way out, right? Well, out I mean, the in hood? the hood, you got two ways out. You know, football or entertainment. So, right. you know, entertainment wasn't an option. And education was never important. No one ever emphasized education. Right. Uh, so I quit high school with two weeks left and I joined the gang because the gang offered me something. They offered me family. They offered me friendship. Uh, they offered me a false stability. Right. But I was looking for that at 17 years. I was looking for love. You know, what kid doesn't want to be loved at that age? Absolutely. And being in the gangs, I began to excel very fast in leadership because I was good at fighting. I was very angry anyway and uh, went and bought a gun. And the first gun I bought was, of course, a 44 Magnum, which is the one my father gave me at nine. Right. There was commonality there. And for the next seven years of my life, from 86 uh, to 93, I was shot six different times. Uh, I was arrested over 45 times. Uh, wow. You know, forgery, unauthorized use of motor vehicle, aggravated robbery, deadly weapon. Uh, and, and then I really started doing a lot of robbing. I hooked, got hooked on crack cocaine. Okay. And so from 89 to 93, I was homeless for four years, slept in vacant houses, no lights, no gas, no water, um, homeless on the corner, you know, just like the guy we see now, right. um, you know, but on the inside, I was still there. I was still hurting. I was still angry. I was still frustrated, you know, saying, God, why me? Why did this happen to me? Because I didn't raise my hand in the third grade and say, I want to join a gang. I want to be arrested 45 times. I want to be a drug addict. I shot want to be homeless. Times. You know, shot Who six times. Who gets shot six times? Who you asked know, for that? I, good well, thing you're still alive. Well, I, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I know I kept getting shot because I started robbing drug houses, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, I got to say this. I got to let everyone know. I wasn't a regular robber, okay? I never robbed old ladies. I only Thank robbed goodness, drug dealers, I was you really know? worried. I was so I was an ethical robber. You know, I had a little <laughs> ethics about my robbing skills. You know, I only robbed the drug dealers. <laughs> Hey, you only robbed the bad guys. I only robbed the okay. bad guys. You know, I was like that, you know, old school Robin Hood. But you know what? It's crazy because. But they're they, the ones that shoot. I know they knew who I was because I never wore a mask. It's sort of like oh, now, I still no. don't wear a mask. <laughs> you think I would wear a mask one day, right? But, you know, going through that was very, uh, that was very hard. It was very different. Uh, it was, it, it, it put a lot of resentment in my heart 
for people who didn't reach out to me, right? especially those that said that they were Christians. Right. You know, I didn't grow up in church, but we went right. periodically. And um, I, I remember on Sundays, I knew it was Sunday because, uh, you know, I would be on the corner and I'd see the people with the fancy hats and suits on. And I wanted them to get out and tell me about the God that they served. And if he could help me the way he's helped them, but they didn't. So at that point, I started hating Christians. I said I would never become like them. Right. Because they would lock the doors on me and they would look at me as though I was trash and I didn't belong on earth. And, I'm so sorry. You know, yell things, get a job. These people going to church, get a job, quit doing drugs. Well, if I knew how to do that, I would have done it. Would have done it. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that, you know. It didn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. So I just said I would never be a Christian. You know, I hated Christians mm -hmm. for years. I'm sorry that you were treated that way. When we come back, Keenan goes from the hood to the White House. We'll be right back. You won't hear how God is working on mainstream media, but you will hear it on the Jennifer Sheehan television show. In a world currently imprisoned by fear, I'm committed to telling fearless stories of hope restoration, redemption, and miracles. Here's just a sample of stories my amazing guests share about God's limitless love in action. God rescued me from pornography and sex addiction. I was on the brink of death, but Jesus saved me. I was attacked by a huge grizzly bear, but God preserved my life. At the age of two, raised by my sister without parents, my birth father threw me against a metal sheet wall, slicing my stomach open, leaving me for dead in a pool of blood. After he abandoned me, my true Heavenly Father, God, did not. My 17-year-old son was murdered on Christmas Eve. I was in a bad place. I purchased a gun each day, went to the lake and held it to my head to end my life. After over 50 guns, I sought out professional help. I went on the Jennifer Sheehan television show to share my story. On filming day, God got a hold of my heart, and right there on the set, I prayed to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. This show is giving people hope in Jesus. That's why we do what we do. We, we want you to hear and see amazing stories of how God brings beauty from ashes and how he brings hope and healing. Even in the midst of life's hardest struggles, God is using this show to change lives. Through the power of story, the Jennifer Sheehan television show is sharing the gospel in regions around the globe. We reach an audience of over 3 million people in the U.S., Africa, India, Pakistan, and China. Will you partner with us so that the Jennifer Sheehan Show continues to grow in its influence and reach for Jesus Christ? Donate your tax-deductible gift at the jennifershehanshow.com slash donate. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. All right, Keenan. so you wind up in prison. Yes. What happens prison. in prison? It was horrible. I'm sure. I don't want to go. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> Everything was horrible. Uh, prison was good for me, though. Okay. Uh, it was good because it became the incubator right. for change. Right. After four years, you know, I started watching the Muslims. Guys, they were very disciplined. Right. I knew I needed some discipline in my life. And so when I watched their discipline, I appreciated it. The way they held their Quran, the way they were so structured and their beds were made perfect. So that was attractive to me. And so you could have just joined the army. Well, it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> if they'd given me that choice, I would have joined the army. Right? So, Something in discipline you know, in the army. And this is about three and a half years in, I guess, some, somewhere along in there. And yeah. so. But you like that discipline. I love the discipline of that. And, and you felt you needed that. I knew I needed that. Okay. I know I needed that. And so it was good for that season. Right. And when I joined, I became a Muslim. Okay. And the thing is, is that it still wasn't enough. I was going to ask you that. It, it How just, did becoming a Muslim It, it wasn't enough. Feel? It still didn't fulfill what I sensed on the inside of me. And I sensed something ready to explode. Interesting. I sensed greatness. I knew that I was called to do something different. Even though I was making horrible decisions in my head, right. you could fix the head. Right. It's the heart that has, you gotta make sure that that's right. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes. In my heart, I still knew that God had something there. And after being a Muslim for I think maybe almost a year, washing my hands, my feet, I'd come out and I was still angry, I was still frustrated. 
uh, I would read the Quran and I still didn't like certain things and it just wasn't fulfilling and but I had just I had destined in my heart I would never become a Christian so that was never an option because you hated Christians because I the way hated they treated Christians you. the way they treated me yes. you know and um, and that's not love no it's not I mean if I can't you, you know this we have to be the, a greater reflection for Christ Amen. dealing with people not just going to church you yes. know um, and so long story short I, I did something crazy one day uh, it was an ad seg I was locked down because of a riot and I'm in there by myself and I had a conversation with God uh, I talked to him without routine mm -hmm. I just talked to him I talked about my mom my dad football and it really felt good because he didn't criticize or condemn me he didn't hold it against me. He didn't tell me to shut up. Um, and so the next day I said, I'm going to do that again. And I did it again the next day. And I said, you know, if, if, if it were doing the Jesus thing, if that is what you want for me, for me to become better, then right. I'm okay with that. Well, I didn't realize I was inviting Jesus into my heart. Uh -huh, you sure were. Uh-oh, you know, what happened? The invasion <laughs> happened, you know. I got invaded, literally. The body snatchers came, you know. And, uh, man, when I said that, I just remember looking at my arms, and the hairs were standing up on my arms. Wow. And the Holy Spirit hit me, and I didn't know there was a Holy Spirit. I had never heard of the Holy Spirit. Invaded me. I was baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, on fire, running around a cell, yelling and talking. And I didn't even know what tongues were. And was. baptized in the Holy Spirit. I didn't even Spirit. know what baptism of the Holy Spirit was. Yeah. All I know is something had apprehended me and I couldn't control it. Wow. And when I finally settled down, all the guards were at the door ready to come in because <laughs> they thought I had lost my mind. You know, they're ready to come in and tackle me. They didn't want me to kill myself. And I just remember saying, I'm okay, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. He's real. He's real, you know, and I couldn't wait to get out of there. And, and I got out and the next two years, you know, I started reading the Bible. And there's and, the key right there. Man, I started reading the Bible, you know, yeah. and I didn't just read the Bible. I read, I, reading the Bible led me to read 248 books in two years in prison because I read about people like Moses who was born a Hebrew, but he was raised an Egyptian. He had the best education. He had the best schooling, the best ethics, the etiquette, the ta everything, and he wrote most of the Old Testament. And then I read about Paul in the New Testament who was educated, scribe, Pharisee, sat, you know, all of that. And I said, I want to be like these guys. And so I said, God, I want to prove that you are inside of me. How do I do that? And he said, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. And Proverbs says, Sills a man thinking so is he. You know, I tell people, you never have to tell me who you are. I just watch the way you act because you'll always act like the person you think you are. Absolutely. And so I knew I needed to change the way I was thinking to become impactful in the world and my posture. And I used to have that real cool, you know, <laughs> that huggy bear. I was in the hood, you know, that, that huggy swagger. bear walk, you know, that swag, I had my swag, right, you know, <laughs> that dip in my hip. You're out of control. You know, and uh, I, I, well, I did, you know, and I was like, one day I was like, okay, wait, hold on. If I'm going to be a leader in the king for God. You got to walk. I got to change this. So yeah. I said, God, I need you to help me change my walk. And so I was reading about Solomon and Solomon, it says Solomon ascended into the temple. And when he was walking into the temple, the queen of Sheba fainted. I said, man, I want to walk like that dude. <laughs> that guy knows how to walk, right? So I changed my walk. You know, I, I changed the way I was eating my, because I, I read about Joseph and, and it's crazy because in 1996, it, you know, Joseph went from the prison to the palace. Right. And I said, if Joseph can do it, so can I. I can do it. And it was the craziest thing because my environment was not conducive to what I said right. or what I was thinking. But I realized that the Bible says that old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And I lived in that moment. I understood that the now was the only thing that mattered. Yesterday didn't exist and tomorrow doesn't exist. Right. All we have is the now, which is where faith is. Absolutely. And I said, man, God, but how did he do it? And the, I saw the smallest thing. He said he shaved his beard. <laughs> right. He understood the protocol of the palace. And God says to me, are you willing to sacrifice what's most precious to you to go to the palace for me? And I said, I am. And that p was part of the inspiration of me reading all of those books right. to learn to educate myself so that I can have communication right. and be able to be on any level. And so I did everything in prison. Prison became my palace. 
And I told guys in 1996, I said, you know what? I'm going to the White House. And they laughed at me because it didn't make any sense to them. I even told some of the guards that I became very close to, you know. Oh, and I got in school. I did get back in school while I was in there. I wrote the warden over 150 letters to let me back in school because I was a gang member on record, so they wouldn't let me in school. And I wrote 150 letters, and then one day I saw the warden walking across, and man, he's got this big cowboy hat on, you know. You know the warden, he's the warden, right? <laughs> big, like it covers the sun up, you know. He's like the president in prison. Man, I see that warden, and I'm going around everybody. Guards, Williams, what are you doing? Get back in. I said, I got to get to Warden Jones. And I finally get close to him. I said, Warden Jones. I yell his name, and everyone stops. He's the warden. And he looks around with the guards, and he says, Williams, I know who you are. If you don't write me any more letters, I'll let you in school. I said, yes, sir. That's all I wanted. Persistence and consistency. Yes. Will create a door when there's not a door. Amen. That determination of doing what God has called us to do makes us unstoppable. Amen. When we partner with him. Absolutely. And so prison was my launching pad. That was in 1996. And you go from the, the day you get out of prison, you get a job. The very next day I got a job. And you 5.30 go, that morning. And okay? you go to the White House for the Trump campaign. Yes. Wow. Yes. I, I mean, my first year out of prison, people say, why do you talk about money? Because money is important. I mean, I made $120,000 my first year out of prison from 98 to 99. I started my own company. Yeah. And then I jumped to 230, and my fourth year out of prison, I was making millions. <laughs> you Praise know? God. But I had a formula that God gave me. Yes. You know, I started a logistics company, and I used the formula that he gave me. And, and, and honestly, it was really about people. It was building relationships with people. And I determined in my heart I would never be like those people I saw on Sunday. And, and I was big on that because Jesus didn't tell us to go to church every Sunday. He said, go into the world. Right. And take the gospel. And going to church is great. Yes. I love going to church for corporate prayer, that corporate setting. Uh, but I still have things that I have issues with, it, you know? Right, absolutely. So I focus on the world. I focus on people that are hurting. It doesn't bother me when someone curses or they're rappers or they're singers or they're in the clubs. It doesn't matter to me. Because if I'm still seeing them the way that God saw me, I could see them for who they could be. Yes. So that they can become what they should be. I love that. Yeah. When we come back, Keenan does something shocking to the police officer that arrested him and locked him up. A house is built with walls, but a home is built with memories. Firehouse Movers takes great pride and honor in serving your moving needs. Built over a fireman's code of ethics to be truthful and honest at all times, to display excellence, respect, and loyalty. We are honored for you to entrust us with your valuable memories. And we have been doing so for over 20 years with hundreds of five-star reviews. We never compromise in quality because we understand that it's easier to explain our prices than to apologize for poor service. Call us today at 972-412-6033 and let us tell you why we're passionate for what we do. Learn more at firehousemovers.com. By His grace, we live. By His will, we bond together to serve you. Behan Show Magazine promotes and connects Christians and Christian owned businesses worldwide. It's digital, nonprofit, and full of inspirational stories. The magazine is emailed, shared on our social media, and promoted weekly on our TV show, reaching millions of viewers. To subscribe to this free magazine and for advertising opportunities, go to thejennifersheehanshow.com. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. <clears throat> okay, so you're in the White House. Incredible opportunity. Yes. What was yes. that experience like? I was the strategic director for the Trump campaign. It, it was the most amazing experience to not just being in politics and in leadership position, but every time I was there or I was speaking or I was representing, it reminded me of what God can do, how I can go from the prison, right, <laughs> drugs and alcohol and street corners and gangs to working for the president of the United States of America and talking with Congress and senators and, and conversing and giving instruction on what to do to them, how could God use me to do that? 
was such a blessing. So, and people probably never even thought that I was thinking that way. Right. They were just happy. <laughs> I was like, okay, God, you're amazing. <laughs> right. But it was cool. It, it was cool. And, and understanding, you know, I became a Republican in order to even get me to that place. When I found out what a Republican was, I didn't know about Frederick, Frederick Douglass. <laughs> he was a Republican. And, you know, uh, George Washington Carver and, and, and Harriet Tubman and, you know, Prince Whipple. James Armstead, you know, all these guys through the American Revolution and American history that were Republicans for a reason because the, the policies create freedom. And when I became that, I was in the right place. And it began to excel me very quickly. I know the favor of God when I'm excelling. Yes. I know I'm in the I right agree. place when I'm excelling. And I'm excelling through conversation, through relationship, and doors are opening that I didn't even try to open. They're just opening. I'm walking by and they open. And I walk in and there's the glory. Uh, so I was in the right place with that. Um, but what it was cool. What do you think about President Trump? Love President Trump. He's, um, he's different. He's a very different guy. He did more, President Trump did more for criminal justice reform than any president ever. He did more for the black community than any other president. People don't know that because they listened to the wrong news station. And the word never got out. They looked at his demeanor. He's a very hardcore guy. He's very strict. He's very disciplined. Uh, he's not the guy that's going to be on television and crying and saying, I'm sorry. He just does something about it. Signed the, the First Step Act. You know, 4,000 people released in six months, and 91% of those were black. Signing a 10-year Senate bill for historically black colleges, relieving historically black colleges of $322 million of debt. No one had ever done that. Remember, the president before him had the same opportunity. Why would he do that if he was not a good guy? He did that because he saw the necessity of helping black America, the blacks in America. And I, and I say black America, I don't like the African-American thing. I just got to tell you, okay? I let everyone know I'm not African-American. I don't know anything about Africa. I'm an American. I'm just an American. Right. You know, born, raised, raised, bred right here in America. But President Trump did some very, very good things for our, for our, our country. And minority communities, he, he believes in economical empowerment. That's why he created the Platinum Plan. Right. So I'm going to infuse with money because money makes things happen. Right. People can't even become who they are because they can't pay their bills. Right. He saw that. He didn't know anything about that. He's rich. Right. But he listened to people. He listens to people. And when he listens and he understands it, then he attacks it and he puts policies in place. And I appreciate that. I love that. So the guy that the police officer that locked you up, put Alan you Patton. in prison. Yes. Alan you Patton. wanted to meet with him. He yes. came to the prison not even knowing what you wanted to no, talk about, No, he didn't come about, to the right? prison. I, I went to the police station. Okay. I went to the police station about three years after I was out. I had just gotten engaged to a judge. Okay. So God's already doing some dynamic dynamic things. My friends became judge and, you know, police officers and attorneys and prosecutors. And so I got engaged to a judge. and It was just on my heart. I needed to go thank him because he was a pivotal point of change in my life. Right. And was he so shocked because he didn't know what you wanted from him? He was clueless. He didn't even know I, it was me in the lobby. So, you know, he's walking towards me when I had him called down and people everywhere. And, and I raised my hand so he would see that I was the one looking for him. So he's walking towards me and I'm looking at him and, you know, I'm, I'm smiling. And he's then he starts slowing down a little bit. <laughs> like, so, uh-oh. Right, like, oh, uh, <laughs> I think I know this guy. So I put my hand out. You know, 90 degree angle symbolizes friendship. So that he would shake my hand. And he shakes my hand. He says, don't I know you? And I put my hand on his and I said... Yeah, I'm Keenan Williams. You sent me to prison about eight years ago. And his heart starts beating in, his, in my hand. I felt him being nervous. And I said, but I'm here to thank you because what you did changed my life. Right. He grabs me in the middle of the police station. He's hugging me and now he's crying. Then I start crying with him. I'm like, I don't know why he's crying, but I'm crying too, you know. And he says, I got to take you upstairs and show you something. He walks me upstairs to his computer. And we're passing all these other police officers up, and they're looking because they recognize me, right? And this time I didn't have cuffs on. And he opens his computer, and he was typing his resignation. Mm. This is in 2002, 2001. He says, I was typing my resignation because I didn't think that anyone cared about the job that I did. Wow. Alan just retired, and Alan worked another 16 years after that moment. So that's so why God, God put that on your heart. God put that on my heart to go right. to him. Because he gave me 24 hours to spend with my family before I went to prison. 
No one had ever done anything like that. And he said in his heart, he knew it was the right thing to do. And they didn't arrest me for 24 hours. And he let me spend that with my family. And I knew then that he wasn't a white police officer after a black guy. <laughs> it wasn't a race thing. He was doing his job. And I wanted to thank him for that. And we're still very good friends. He's in my book. He's going to be in the movie. He's a um, very good friend of mine. He's an awesome man of God. We're going to be doing some prisons together and doing some ministry stuff together. What would you say right now to people that are in prison? People that are in prison, it's not the end. It's a transition. Understand that prison can become the place of your preparation. I believe that when preparation meets opportunity, it becomes a formula for success. Preparation is a proof of your faith. Don't say you have faith without preparing for what you say you have. Right? Absolutely. Preparation, education is key. Education, education, education. Learning how to communicate, building relationships, walking in integrity, the law of subtraction, the law of honor, honoring people, the inmates, the guards. You know, honor will create an opportunity that your gift won't. Interesting. Honor will get you into a door that your gift will hold you back from. Remember the first six, six commandments are all about honor. It's true. So God's big on honor, and we have to be that. So I tell those guys to prepare to be great. And in doing that, your character, integrity, dignity, learn how to walk, talk, think different. Walk like the person God has called you to be and not the person that the world has formed you to be. Amen. Thank you so much for You're sharing so and for coming yes. on. You know you're stuck with me forever. I'm just saying, my all right. brother in Christ. It's, it's all good. <laughs> Thank you. When we come back, God can also save you from the situation that you're in. We'll be right back. The bullet went through his lung and through his heart. The assassin, I'm here to kill you. I felt the bullet hit me. God will give you the strength to press on if you put your trust in Jesus. See the Jennifer Sheehan TV show Saturdays at 11.30 a.m. on Channel 33. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. If you find yourself in a situation that you can't get out of, Jesus Christ is the way out. Pray with me. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. You rose on the third day. Please forgive me for my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Tune in next week. We've got another great story for you.